Welcome back. In the previous video, I showed you how to create a quiz assignment. So this is where we left off. What I'm going to do is if I click on this now, it will show you what the students would see. And they would obviously fill this in. Now, for me to show you how to assess it, what I'm going to have to do is fill this in a few times um, to get some dates to work with. Now, I've just realized I have one small issue, one mistake that I made, which is that I forgot to add their name. Um, however, as it stands, it will collect their email, so you can actually identify who they are from that alone. However, it's always a good idea to have their name in there as well. So just a quick sidestep. I'm going to go back over here and uh, go back to the form. If I click on this, that should let me go back on. Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, let me see. How can I do this? Oh, yes, I know. If I go to Google Drive... Um, go to recent and hopefully it should show my form there it is so I'm just going to open this up and um, this is quite useful actually because you may want to add something afterwards so this is what you do you basically find the original file as it stands and then go in here go to the top the first one here and click plus and it should put the question underneath and what we're going to put down is uh, full name or you want to if you want to put first name then surname okay so full name i'm going to keep it simple short answer required done it's as simple as that there's no points required with this one because it's their name and then that's saved automatically as well so if i cross this off now go back to the class and cross this off and now open it from here it should hopefully have the name in there. Perfect. Right. So let's imagine um, Joe Blogs answer this question. And I'm just going to randomly cl click a number of different things uh, all the way down and just put blah, blah, blah at the bottom. Okay. And then submit. So this is what the students would do. Oh, I forgot to answer this one here. Just click there and submit. Um, now I'm going to do this a few more times. Um, and then come back to you. Sorry, I'm back. Uh, before I do that, I've just realized there's a new sys um, feature with the points. I didn't realize that you can actually choose the correct answers as you're making the uh, assessment. So here, for example, I've, I've been tapping in the points, as you remember from the previous video. So I put one point here, one point for this one, and so on and so forth. So let me show you what to do. It's dead easy. So you look at the question, what is a monopoly? I know it is one retail when one retailer dominates the market. So click on that, and it goes green. Now the system knows that, what, that when the student answers that question, they'll get instant response uh, feedback from that. So that is a correct answer for that. And all you got to do is go down. So again, I'm glad I made this mistake, actually, because you can see how quickly you can go back and do this. So click on the answer key. Uh, why does a business benefit from growth? Because it will have uh, more market power. Perfect. Let's go to the next one and do that all the way down. What does economies of scale mean? Lower unit costs. So I'm going to go over here. This one here. Done. Make sure they're all done. Yeah, that's fine. Um, next one. Uh, what is hiring more staff? An example of answer key that is internal growth. Done. And the last one. So what is spreading overhead? Oh, that's economies of scale. Done. So these answers will automatically uh, tell the students if they've got the answer correct or not. Uh, sorry, let me just make sure this is actually done. Yes, it is. It's there. Um, obviously, for this question, you can't do that. So I'm going to show you how to answer this uh, or, or feedback to this in a moment. So um, what I'm going to do, as I said, is I'm going to answer it a few times. I'm just going to get a few people uh, responses in there just so you can see. I can play with some data and see exactly how to assess this. Okay, so... Um, I've just checked and it's not let, it's not letting me do it uh, purely because it remembers the email and obviously I only have one email to do this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a different way now there is a way to do it but I thought you should know about this section here before I go away and add the that uh, fake data in and show you how I can work with it so before I do that I just want to show you this page so as you can see there's only one response because I filled it in and as you go down the analytics is quite useful it actually tells you a summary uh, for each one so um, if you go down here 
they can tell you how many people got the answer correct for the first one, for the second one, for the third one, and so on and so forth. So um, you can see here that the, the the percentages showing up here. And obviously, it's a little bit uh, tedious right now because there's only one one set of resp one response uh, as yet, but we can see more as we have more people answering it. Now, the data comes up on a spreadsheet. Now, when you click on this here, so obviously this is the question side where we created the quiz. This is the response side, response page. If you click on this, what looks like the Google uh, Sheets button, and then click on create a new spreadsheet, keep it as it is default to click on create. It should then open up a new tab uh, and insert all the data that's been created or been um, collated uh, by all the different uh, students that have answered that quiz or assessment. Now, as it stands, as I said, it's only me. I'm the only person who's actually answered it, and I've just done this as a test. Now, what we want is obviously we want a few more people here to see how this looks. Now, you can, just like any spreadsheet, edit this. So I'm going to go here and uh, select everything. I'm just going to fill this in a little bit better just so it fits and you can see it better. So there you go. Um, what I might also do is select on this and go to... If I can find the right text wrapping, there we go. Let's have it wrapping uh, because if I can drag this down, I can then afford to make these smaller and therefore have the full spreadsheet showing so it's a little bit easier on the eyes uh, don't need this one showing anyway so I'm going to hide this for now name is there anyway and let's go across drag this one in to about there and drag this one in as well. So this one would be the one that has most answers. We'll push it down in front now. And let's see, is there anything else that could be smaller? Yeah, let's make this smaller as well because the date and times doesn't it's not as important right now. So there you go. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is finally pause it, add a few more people's answers in here for now, uh, just to make it uh, interesting and then you'll see um, how we can work with this. Okay, welcome back. So I've only put two more in there, uh, but what I'm just trying to show you is once you've got this, and obviously you're going to see things going all the way down. Um, the more students you have, the more uh, further down it goes down the, uh, the, the the database, the spreadsheet here, and obviously the most recent one will go on top. So these things will automatically create itself. Um, what we need to do is we need to give it a sample. Now, if you're using the automatic um, feature of this, um, the quiz, and actually told which one's worth which. And if you if you want to, you could actually keep this question as a separate quiz and leave it out entirely from this quiz and basically create another uh, quiz assignment just for the big six mark question that's requiring the students to type something in you could do that and then in that case the students will be able to get an instant uh, score and of course you don't need to do anything else to this because it already gives you the score here now obviously you can do some clever spreadsheet work and do a percentage you could add say let's just say you insert a left one here and you put a percentage uh, here you could actually create some formulas and say, um, you know, this divided by 10 equals whatever, yeah? So you could just do that very simply. Uh, so let's just say, let me see, I don't know if it's going to work actually. Let's do this, this that, divided by, um, uh, it's not 10, it is 5 actually. It's supposed to be 5. Um, yeah, it's five. So that's 0 0.4. And if I then go to this, it should say yes, 40%. There you go. And I can get rid of the percentage figure. So you can have the percentages there and you can create your own um, you know, data set uh, here as well. So that could be the end of it. Now, if you want to do something more clever than that, there is something called um, Fluberoo. Um, that basically creates uh, other analytics. But to be fair, since Google's created these uh, this feature, you don't need to you need to use that. I was going to show you that, but really, that's more than enough. But I did want to show you is how to actually give feedback on these things here, these six mark questions. Now, 
one way to do that is, let's have a look. I think you should be able to go to, let's see, can I go here? It's an individual response. No, you can't. So it'd have to be um, back to the classroom and go to the student work. You find the person who's handed it in, um, which in this case I can't show you because it's difficult without uh, someone answering back here. Um, and basically you click on the person's name and you should be able to give it some feedback by typing straight in there. Um, so the comments that basically go underneath, they will see a comment from you underneath their form here. So you read the question four, five, six, whatever it might be. In this case, it was question six and give them feedback here and the score that you think they actually received. I hope that makes sense. Um, and that's basically it. So yeah, um, what I will do is just to make this a little bit cleaner, I am going to actually break it up a little bit because uh, it just makes it look a little bit easier to see. So, so for example, if you click on view score, as a student, you can see, they would see, okay, Joe Blogs, he got two out of 10. Um, it's not really 10 because obviously the last question doesn't count. Uh, if we deleted that and put it as a separate question, then it would say two out of five. And they'll be able to see what they got right and wrong inside. So we've got instant response. So this is a great way of doing uh, quick assessments um, after each small topics. Now, if you want to make this a little bit more interesting, you could actually link it to a page. So if I go here and just to go to edit, um, I might say, uh, let's see, add a link. And since you know uh, from the previous video, I use this website. So uh, if I go to the revise section, it could be any website. I mean, to be honest, yeah, I did I did this. I found a little bit of a cheat here just for the sake of this pur the purpose of this video, uh, this tutorial. You could, you could have found any uh, website at all and make the students read through a comprehension task where they read through the actual page itself. So I'm gonna copy this link here. And then you create questions linked to the knowledge found on that page forcing them to read through it to provide the answers that they need to, 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 to do well in that question. So I'll go back over here and paste it in so like so, and then they have the link to the website in order for them to do well in that test. Um, so that's how you do that. I am going to see if I basically go back into the questions. If I, I'm just gonna save this for now copy and delete this this is the delete button done and now that should automatically change everything so total points let's see it's one two three four no it's not it shouldn't be four. Oh, there we go that's why this should be saying one as well so that's five points there we go and it says five points there now it should only show the responses for those questions as you can see so when they see the test hopefully if i click on this now let me see view score there we go it updates it so two out of five and they can see all of the correct and incorrect answers from them now if i wanted to as i said earlier on i could create another question so i'll save this for now and create a different one. So go back over here. No, nope, sorry, go back, click on classwork, create another quiz assignment. But this time it's just gonna be one question. And to be fair, because there's only one question. Now, now, if you want to do two or three questions, I'd go through the whole process as explained in the previous video, the one before this, and create another blank quiz with two or three exam style questions where they're forced to write an answer. Now, if you do that, perfectly fine, you can do that, but you can just put the question in here if it's just a one question to follow up from another multiple choice set. Now you could break it up like that. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. It's really down to what you decide is best for you. So in this case, I'm just gonna put it, actually I'm just gonna go back and create um, a question. Um, should I? Mm. No, let's do it. Let me show you. Yeah. Um, let's go back over here. 
give it a second. I'm going to put the question in here when it loads. There we go. This will be question one. Now, I want you to imagine, so first things first, actually, let's uh, make sure this has got six there. Done. And it's not multiple choice. This one is going to be a paragraph answer. There we go. Done. And required. And I do add. And then I'm going to just paste that in again. Just pretend this is the second question. And this is a nine mark question this time. You know, up the ante everywhere. Uh, every time they go down. So I'm going to put nine here instead. Done. And required as well. I'm just going to put um, exam style questions. Um, okay, copy that one, paste, done, and that is that done, and um, of course we need name as well, required, short answer, done, and that is that, so if I cross this off, it should have it there, I'm going to put exam style questions here, leave that blank, and I'm going to assign this. Yeah, let's do that. Now, this time round, because it's a multiple, it's not a multiple choice question, whereas this one was, you go on here, you'll see it's an exam style question, the title's there as well, they open it up, they see this, they fill it in, they answer the questions, and it's done. So, your blogs, Good answer. Amazing answer. So let's pretend that's what they've done, and you press uh, they press submit, and obviously they they won't get a response because there's nothing to to get from this. So in this case, you'd have to do some marking. So as I said, hopefully if we go back over here, you go into here, and. Click and hand it in. Hopefully, uh, the problem is it's it's recognizing that this was me who typed it in. So typically, you'd see one here after someone's answered it, and then you should be able to basically give them feedback underneath here uh, for their question. Now there is another way, um, but it's not as direct. It doesn't actually go to them directly. Um, let me click on this and see if it comes up. No, it doesn't. Uh, yeah, so basically we really do need some uh, live students here to actually see what I mean. Uh, but when you click on that, you should be able to respond to their answers. And that's that. So that should hopefully help you create these uh, teaching resources.